<clears throat> all right, let's go. All right, hello and welcome back to another 5K tennis discussion. Uh, today is Tuesday, May the 11th, mm -hmm. 2021. And Carla and I chose today because of rain once again here in Dolphin Island, Alabama to do our first pre-Roland Garros or first pre-French Open discussion. Um, so we're going to get right into this. Uh, a couple things before we start the show today. Um, Carla and I have picked 10 men and 10 women that we think have a chance to either win the French Open or to make it very deep into the French Open. So actually, I selected 11. I, I, I selected 10 men, 10 women, and then I included one like dark horse or wild card or young player that I thought, you know, may make the second week, something like that. Okay. Um, so this is our first pre-Roland Garros show for the 2021 French Open. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Why? We give away a lot of stuff during majors. The last major, we gave away um, cash. I think we gave away up to $250 cash, a tennis racket. I don't think anybody won the tennis racket. Anyway, um, we're going to be giving away prizes, Ytex uh, hats, Ytex strings, uh, cash prizes if you don't want the hats or strings. So make sure to hit the subscribe button because we'll, we will be giving away a good bit for this French Open. The only way that, uh, or the only um, thing you need to do to qualify is to hit the subscribe button. All right, uh, real quickly before we start naming our top 10 men and top 10 women that we think will do well at this French Open, I want to ask everybody once again um, if you have played our fantasy team competition, um, please leave in comments that you would like to play it again. The fantasy team competition. Uh, I'm, gonna go, I'm willing to give away up to $250 in cash as, or, or choose any tennis racket that you want. I'll get it to you or a reel of strings. I'll get that to you or, uh, in essence, the cash value thereof. Um, the fantasy team competition consists of you all selecting nine men and nine women. Uh, only four or a maximum of four men or women can be seated in the tournament within the top 20. Um, you can select as many seated outside the top 20 that you wish, but the top the, you can only have four that are seated within the top 20. Um, if you have um, uh, four picks that are seated in the top 20, that's okay. Uh, they are worth one point apiece. Your players four through eight must be seated outside of the top 20, and they are worth two points per uh, match win. And then your ninth player must be a wild card or a qualifier, and they are worth three points per match win. Uh, the person who accumulates the most points in men's and women's at the end will receive the $250 cash racket reel, whatever. Um, but I don't want to do it again unless there's at least 20 comments that says, yes, do it, yes, do it, yes, do it on this video. We mentioned it on another video. We got like two. Um, so um, uh, it, it, it's fun. It involves um, uh, some um, algorithms from um, Surgeon Jovanovic. Um, is it Surgeon? Um, anyway. I think it's Dushan, is it Dush Is it Dushan? I, I thought it was Surgeon. Anyway, um, we do have someone that keeps up with it on Excel. Um, anyway, if you want to play the fantasy team, uh, put it in comments, and we'll, we'll start doing separate videos on the rules so they're not so questionable. I know I didn't just take enough time, yeah. but I don't want to waste everybody's time here. Also, I have another question. Um, those of you guys that think that Justin should keep his curly hair and, and the facial hair, you know, say yes. And those who don't, say no. <laughs> what, what does this have to do with the show? Just, I'm just curious. She, yeah, she hates on that. I don't I'm get it. I'm just curious. If you like the curly hair and the beard... Say yes. If not, say no. Or if you just like the curly hair, no facial hair, say that. You only live <laughs> once, right? And, and, and I've had long hair before. When I met, well, not when I met Carla, but soon no, after. I, I had, told him. I had hair done on my back. Yes, and he cut it. So you act like it's new. He cut it, thankfully. Okay. Um, our first show that Carla and I ever did, and this was about three years ago now, we sat on our back porch. And how did it go, Carla? I walked home, or, or I got home one day, and I told Carla, I was like, Wimbledon's fixing to start. Let's go out on the back porch and hit record and talk about our predictions for Wimbledon, dark horses, and who we thought that could make the second week of winning, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. 
Big shout out to all of you out there that were actually here for the first show because I think Rahesh Kumar was. I think Dark Knight, Sergeant Jovanovich. No, he was not. It was just it was just Rahesh, Dark Knight, Constantine, Millennium Constantine. Uh, those are the three that are. Oh, and uh, Stimpy, Stimpy Boy, who changed his name. You know what I just realized? What? You can do these animal signs. Look at this, a dog. Roof, roof, roof. Check that out. Woof, woof. Okay, that's dumb. Look, so uh, we got a tapestry ordered for the wall. So we have a 5K tapestry tapestry ordered. So I plan for the 5K to be right here. And then we'll put Ivor Savage's white tex hat. What's up, Ivor? Uh, Ethan DA's hat. Um, Dave Rains' hat. Um, your boy, uh, Bill, Bob. Davis, uh, his oh, Australian. be watching this. At please six. His Australian Open passes. Remember. We'll put we'll put Barbara Wharton and Bear Wharton's Indian Wells earpieces, and uh, this is Bob's too. And Johan Creek, two-time Australian Open champion. We'll put his autographed ball. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and start with our first man and first woman that we think will do well at the French Open. Or may even make the second, uh, or make the second week is what we mean by doing well. If they make the second week, they did well. So when I checked the phone to make sure it was recording, your head was almost off, so you might want to like. Well, this is how you set me up. Oh no, man! I don't even like this side. I prefer that side. What, what was that tribe called quest song? I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I don't, don't know. know this one. Okay, um, Carla, who is your number? This is in no particular order. Who? No, it's not in no particular. Order. Who is the first person you think will do well on the French Open on the men's side? Of course, you gotta go with Nadal. I have him of too. Of course, thirteen-time champion, just won Barcelona. Even if he doesn't well, do well, on mark him up. Yeah, even though if he doesn't do well on clay uh, during before the you know the warm-up tournaments, you can never count this dude out. This is one guy that can play on that surface. Was raised on that surface. He's lefty. He's uh, uh, defends a lot. He knows how to be patient. He's annoying on this surface. I mean, he might as well sleep on the surface. Yeah, the, the, I don't think that we need to debate too much about Rafael Nadal's chances at the French Open. He's done this 13 times. Yes, I know um, he, he, he's lost a couple matches this year on clay. whoop de doo he, he did that. We were talking about this earlier. Yeah. And you were like, yeah, it was the same thing in 2018, but worse than he won the French Open. Exactly. Lost uh, to Fagnini, I remember. And everybody was like, ooh, he hasn't won a tournament yet. And then he won. He wins the Rome at the end. He wins it. And then he wins the French Open without being tested. Last year, he beat Djokovic, even bageled him. He really wasn't tested that much. I think Sinner tested him a little bit in the semis or quarters and... I mean, it's hard to test this guy three out of five, you know. And I think the lefty, the fact that this is where he loves to play, he's just very comfortable, knows the surface well. Um, and this time he's playing it during the normal time, not as he did last year when it was a bit colder. And I, and I did hear that Yannick Sinner had a little bit of tenacity in, in, in an interview, and he indicated that I'll make Nadal pay a heavier price next time I play him because I'm better than I was last year. On the clay surface. I think he's right about that. He's better on so, the clay. So, good for him. He's older, a little bit older. Um, Nadal, three out of five sets. Is, is, it's, it's just a different beast. How many times do we see the greatest of all time coming back from two sets to none and the best of five uh, and win? We, we it, it, Over the years, the best of the best get it done. Mm -hmm. um, I still have a heartbreak for when Roger Federer, though, was up two sets to none on Yo Wilfred Sanga at Wimbledon. And uh, Sanga won that match. Does anybody remember the year of that match was it 2012 2011 2010 do you remember this match Federer was up two sets to none on Joel Wilford song and lost it he's lost a lot of those type of matches uh, but I but I don't ex I, look if, if Nadal goes out on uh, goes out to uh, Roland Garros and and he is down two sets to none in every match that he plays I'm still taking Nadal yeah I think that Nadal has a much better chance winning the French Open than any of us winning the lottery if we all play the lottery <laughs> well, but I think if we all play the lottery in our own countries in our own states, he will still win the French Open. <laughs> I didn't we I, win the lottery. I didn't quite grasp that. Well, before we, any of us, let's say the whole world joined the lottery, well, everybody that watches tennis, Nadal would have a better chance winning the French Open than we will winning the lottery. I would agree because Nadal is guaranteed to win the French Open for the most part, and if um, we play the lottery, we're not guaranteed. Like, but I'm just saying, all of us, everyone that's watching. Okay, if we all played it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
Scratch Nadal, we've got him. I've scratched him off. Um, I had Nadal as my first man too, so let's shift over to the first woman. I have um, Ashley Barty. I have the same thing. Yeah. Why do we have Ashley Barty? Number one, um, I'll, I'll speak the, on the women's side first. She's won it before. Mm -hmm. Barty has a lot of class. She has a lot of variety. She can hit through the court. She can play defense. She has a wonderful slice. She can mix it up. Uh, she has a great lob. She has great footwork, and she has great poise. Um, Furthermore, she has great fight. On clay, you have to be able to fight, and she's a fighter. Wasn't she a cricketer um, at one point in time? Uh, so I, I think she's played multi-sports and been in multi-locker rooms, and she knows how to fight. She, and she was interviewed um, just the other day, and someone asked um, Ashley Barty, do you think you were the favorite to win the French Open? And her class emanated then. Barty said something along the lines of, I'm not the favorite. There's so many uh, young and, 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 and hard-fighting girls that are much better than me on this surface. I'm just happy to be here, uh, but uh, no, I don't think I'm the favorite, and, and, and I hope I do well. She has ultimate class um, on top of her entire game. I think Barty is the favorite, in my opinion. If I am doing the tennis racket giveaway, again, in comments, we also do a tennis racket giveaway, and all you have to do is to predict the men's finalist, women's finalist, and both winners, and we will send you a brand new tennis racket of your choice or the equal cash value, as long as you're subscribed. But Barty is my women's finalist and winner right now. Do you agree or disagree? Um, I, I think I like what she said. Any, uh, There's a lot of girls that can play on the surface. The surface is very unpredictable, so I don't think that you can go right out like many of the slams, like Wimbledon. Or even the Australian Open, you could pick a, a right out winner. I don't think I could say that she's my favorite, but I think I put her as number one. And I said, well, she's been she has the most reliable game, and she's been the most consistent on the surface. Um, at Charleston, she lost in the quarters to Badosa. Stugard, she lost. Uh, she beat Sabalenka, won that tournament. She lost in the Madrid final to Sabalenka again, another final. So she's been the most consistent, the most reliable uh, game. She has a, a good backhand, a great backhand slice, which helps out in clay, especially when you have those heavy top spit, you know, players or screeching players, you know, you could kind of stop them with the slice. And she has variety, which is what you need in clay. You can't just hit the ball hard. She's patient. Well said. You mentioned screeching. Last night we were watching, <laughs> last night we were watching Camilla Georgi and we were watching, what was it, Bedosa? It was not Bedosa. It was Soribes Tormo. Oh, to yeah. Soribes Tormo. Yeah, and what an awful screech. That wasn't a screech. That was like a... Do uh, uh, no, it was like a ninja. She hit the ball and she'd be like, yeah, 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 yeah. But it was like in a man's voice. It was Freaking nuts. It just didn't match her because, it, I, in my opinion, I think she's a pretty lady. Yeah. But when the, the sound came out, it was just a bad sound. It, it just sounded like a dude, I don't know, getting choked or... <laughs> yeah, and then, and then we had and then we had the altercation uh, between the chair umpire and Camilla Georgie's father. Did you did you did you see this? I did not see that. Did I mean, we watched the match. Well, they were in the third set. Yeah, and the referee, the the, the poor lady. The, so the dad chimed in on. Um, pardon me. The dad chimed in on some of the antics going on on court. You know, the, the calls, whatever. Uh, and the and the and, and the, the the poor umpire, she gets her walkie-talkie and, and she asks for someone to be on the sideline when she walks off the court when the match is over because she felt like she was in a really uncomfortable situation. Well, that dude is scary looking. Um, I mean, you had Camila Georgia. We watched that match. You know, pretty girl hitting the ball hard, and then you have Sori Vitormos, who's a pretty girl too, but. I had to ask myself, how did this girl make it a pros? Her serve, she had like this full Eastern grip. And then you would think she starts out right. And then when she serves, it was like a lollipop. It was like a push. I'm like, and then the sound that came out of that. And even the whole game style, it was just very ugly. Even when she sliced, she would grunt. And I, I feel bad for the umpire. I actually thought, here's a young umpire. She probably was a tennis player. I've seen her on. She, I've she seen looked, her on she looks she, like she, She's she been around. To, she looks like she used to be a tennis player, you know. Your typical Russian yeah. blonde with the high ponytail. I mean, I feel bad for her because, you know, here you got this guy that looks like, um, what's that, Robert Blake, that director we were watching last, just that type of scary dude, you know, I don't know. 
Yeah, interesting, interesting scenario to say the and, least. And bad for match. Georgia to lose that match because she was a better player. But well, Serena is Tormo. You were right. She was she was grunting when slicing and lobbing. Mm -hmm. uh, Georgie was the was the heavier hitter, and she still lost the match. Unbelievable. Anyway, um, like Nadal's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay, <laughs> Nadal's off. Uh, Barty is off. My second man, uh, Novak Djokovic. I, I'm guessing you have him too. I have Djokovic. I said, how can you go wrong with this guy? Won the French Open, has had many opportunities, been a finalist for many times, and play on clay. Hasn't had a great season on clay, but does that really matter? You can't count him out. You just never know. We know he's lost to Evans, but I think, you know, he really wasn't there. A lot going on. He's lost to Karatsev. I think that, uh, in my opinion, you know, he was trying different things. And he, it was a small tournament. I don't think he wanted to win that tournament. And he just beat Taylor Fritz. He still looks a little bit irritable. Maybe something's bugging him. But you have to give him a chance to win it. You, you have to. Yeah. I don't think I need to expand on um, what, what Carla just said because she said it uh, very well. The only thing I will say is that um, Novak Djokovic is an 18-time um, major champion. He has hundreds, probably, hundreds of millions of dollars in, in, in his asset list, maybe $500 million. He's a very smart athlete. He, he is very aware of his body. Mm -hmm. He is very aware of the implications of him getting... Um, the next few grand slams, right? Yeah. So I, I, again, because his 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 camp is so thorough and he is so thorough, uh, I I think that we can just basically wash away what has transpired up until the tournament starts and just and call it a brand new day when the tournament does start. If yeah. Nadal if Nadal and Djokovic are on separate sides of the draw in this tournament, they'll meet in the final. Now, now, I think there's been some discrepancy between seedings at this point, but the tournament Roland Garros cannot afford for these two to not be on separate sides of the draw. They don't want a Djokovic Nadal semi. I can promise you that. Yeah. Okay. Um, who is your? We both had Djokovic, so let's go to the next uh, female. Go ahead, you're Simona Howell. Okay. Um, she's not even in my. List. Okay, so we don't have her. Let me tell you. So we're going to debate this for a moment. Uh, let's start with why don't you have Howell? I think that ever since COVID, her years, her tennis has gone downhill, one. Two, she's gotten, the, uh, she's contracted COVID twice, twice. Um, she's lost, her play season has been very bad. She's lost to players like Mertens uh, and many other players. She just hasn't had a consistent season. She's missed a lot of tennis. Her, her game has become a little bit predictable because there's a lot of players that can play like her that are probably stronger and that have more weapons. I, I feel like Halep is missing a weapon to win. She's won the French Open though, right? She did win the French yeah, Open. Yeah, she, she's a French Open champion, yes. Who did she beat, Stevens? I don't recall. I think she beat Stevens. Who did Who did Simona Halep? I'm sure she beat Stevens. Who, did, who beat Simona Halep? Um, no, who did Simona Halep win in the final of that French Open? I'm sure the, Stevens. The first person to say it in comments, I'll send them a set of Y Tech strings. But if you I, want a set of strings, if you're a player, the first person to answer that, I'll send you the strings. I think I would choose Osaka over Halep. I'm surprised I would put her on that list. Are you crazy? That's how bad I think Halep has played this year. Disagree, totally. Okay. Would you? Would any of you choose Naomi Osaka at the French Open right now? No, I wouldn't choose her. I'm just saying, she's not on my list. I'm just saying, Halep has done that bad. Are you saying that... If, if, oh, if Osaka and Halep played right now in the finals of the French Open, who would you pick? I'd pick Osaka. I don't think that Halep's going to make nuts. it. You're Halep nuts. is not even going to. Halep has won it before. But she hasn't had the same type it of takes year. The, it takes the nerves off. Do you she, understand if you've won a major before and you're in that final again, you have less nerves than the, the first final. time opponent. She's not on my list. She's not going to. Neither is Osaka. I think I'd choose someone and just random that we don't know. There's just a lot of girls that can play on the surface and some way better than her right now. Who is right here? I have I have Halep on my list as number two. Um, she doesn't even have, have her. Have you seen her? She doesn't have her on her list at all. Have you even, who who you, do you agree with? Who? who? Did you do your research on her? This, have you, I don't need to, Carla. Okay, so we're going, it's just like us picking like, you know, hey, pick your top ten. We're always going to say Serena. 
We're always going to say Venus. You have to do your research. It's Venus? I'm talking about you, any, any tournament. Your Venus? No, I'm talking about any tournament. Halep has not done well this year. I wouldn't even put her in that list. Okay, let me tell you why. Your I'm... girl, Sabalenka, has a way better chance of winning the French Open than Halep does. Just saying. Let me tell you why I have Halep. Okay, maybe she hadn't had the best year. Does anybody remember the last year? Coronavirus and lockups and no fans and blah, 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 blah. So has everybody else gone through the same thing. I understand that. Some people react differently to different environments, right? Some people like pace. Some people don't. Some people like variety and some people like hit the ball hard. Some people hit off their back foot and some people don't. What I'm saying, different strokes for different folks is all I'm saying. Now, to Howard, she's won this before. Yeah, right. Okay. She's been around it. Now, now we do have players like Anna Ivanovich and Helena Ostapenko that have won and done it. And, you know, anyway. and she's not in that category. She, exactly. She's won two slams. Exactly. Yeah. So, so what I'm saying is here is that Halep is a multiple-time major champion. Mm -hmm. You cannot afford to not have her on your team here because if, if she feels like it, she can win it and she knows it. Then she might have to screech a little louder and just interfere a little bit. Next man, let's go. Um, the next man, so I have had, or I've had, I have had, let me go back to high school. I, I, I almost said it again. <laughs> we have both chosen Nadal Djokovic. I have Dominic Tiem next. Do you have Tiem? Well, I didn't have him in order, but I did. But do you have him on your team? I think I do. If, yeah, I have him, yeah. All right. I, I chose Dominic Tiem. I put him at number nine, but I wasn't, yeah, the, I wasn't going by order. Yeah, it, this isn't in order. Yeah. At all. There's no order here at, at all. It's just if we had to choose 10 people right now, you know, the quarterfinals is eight people. We chose 10 and then a wild card or a qualifier or whatever. And kind of and flowing this into if you want to play fantasy and win cash, let us know in comments and we'll do it again. Um, then this is kind of how it works in a sense. Um, but Dominic Tim, uh, he's been to a final in this tournament. Two finals. Two finals. You know, he, he's played a ton of matches. And when we started this show about a year into it, we were like, geez, Tim's playing a lot of matches. He needs, to, he needs to chill. He needs to go easy. And I think he finally found that. I think he finally matured a bit. Mm -hmm. And because he's not playing, everyone's used to him playing all these matches. And now he's not playing. Everybody's like, oh, my gosh, you know, Dominic Tim, you know, he's all jacked up. No, I think he's finally growing up into... You know, look at LeBron James. You know, he, if he if his ankle's sore, he takes two weeks off. Everybody's like, he's done. But he's just he knows his body, and he's just nursing the ankle. I, I think what TM has been doing is nursing his mentality. Um, he he did really well. I think he lost to what Zverev in Madrid. Uh, he lost in the semis. Was it Veratini or something? Anyway, he lost to uh, no Zverev in the semis. And I don't want to get into Zverev because you may have him on your team. No, I definitely I, don't. I don't. <laughs> uh, but Dominic Tiem has to be one of the favorites here. I'm sorry. I don't well, care. yeah, he's been to two finals. Um, lost to Nadal both times. At, at both times. Um, and respect Maybe him. not. You know, I don't think that he'll win another Grand Slam. I've always said that. But maybe, you know, with Tiem winning his U.S. Open, and maybe, you know, he's going through his downtime and tired and stuff. Maybe he'll feel less pressure here, you know, this time. Maybe he doesn't expect too much. And sometimes when you don't expect too much, you play a lot freer. You know what you just said in a nutshell? Maturity. Mm -hmm. Maturity. It's like when, when, when I was playing with uh, one of our students today. This girl could beat me easily if she would just mature a little bit on the court, right? Mm -hmm. She could beat me easily. You agree or disagree? Yeah. She's but, got the tools. Yeah. But she just has to... Relax a little bit. Yeah. Use her athleticism and relax a little bit. And I think this is what TM is doing. I think he's psychologically relaxing. And, and, and it's almost relaxing to talk about it. I think you could very possibly see TM in the final if not winning. Could be. Okay. Uh, we, we had those same three players. Let's jump to your next female. I had Sabalenka as number two. God, let's go. I did, I'm not my favorite player, but she's been consistent in clay. She's, she won in Madrid, beat Barty, who was on a roll. She was Barty was on a roll this year, being undefeated for you know she had quite a few matches under her belt, um, and she just Stugard same thing lost in the finals to Barty. She just looks solid on clay, and maybe it's her time to win a slam. I don't know. I mean, maybe I didn't think that she had the game for clay since she likes to hit boom boom boom, but it's been working for her. Yeah, Carla Carla just said boom boom boom. Um, that's how Sabalenka plays. Boom boom boom. One two three. Um, she's a lot of forehands. She's a lot. She has a lot of um, a power, but she doesn't have a ton of variety. 
How does this affect her on clay? We have to look at her movement. I think she moves around the court fairly well. I think it's instinctually now in her game that every ball that she gets that semi-neutral to the backhand side, she's coming around it, mm -hmm. which opens the court up, especially on clay, for the heavy topspin ball that goes uh, into the deuce court. Uh, and jumps off the court as it hits the clay. I think this will be a really tough thing for her to overcome on the clay. Yeah. It, it, now, if she can step into those balls and take the inside out and the corner. Which is what she's been doing. Draw the opponent off on their ad side. And to, serving well. To kick up to, so they have to throw up the high ball and she can close with her height and athleticism and pound it into the open court. And if she can do that for seven matches at a major, great. I do have Sabalenka on my team as well, but I don't have her having a chance of winning this tournament, only because she hits through the court uh, more than I think she hits exact spots. I think that she would just have to finish her matches pretty quickly. Just get through them. Two sets, two sets, two sets, two yeah. sets, two sets. Uh, I, so, so right now, out of 20 players, right now we're six for six. We have the same six and same six. No, Sa I don't have help. Oh, you don't have help. So we're five and six. Mm -hmm. Sabalenka is, I think, is a great pick. Uh, I love Sabalenka. You guys have knocked me forever about Sabalenka. She does have a hideous grunt. It's just, it's catastrophic. But when she squeals when she hits, it makes me want to like get this pen and jab it in my cheek. You know, it, it's crazy. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, she's a good player. But I don't think she has a chance against the like of Barty uh, or how Well, she's played it twice already. Twice, two finals they played against each other. Well, good luck in the third. In one, they won one and one. No, well, good luck. A uh, good luck in a major final. Yeah. I don't think Sabalenka gets the final. I think she has a chance. I'm glad to see her doing well. But if you only have one gear, it's kind of like Andy Roddick, big serve inside out forehand. You know, uh, you, you meet someone like Federer, even even how many how many match points did Roddick have? Like three that match and, and Wimbledon 2009, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I bet you Djokovic is like, why did you win that Roddick? Why? I think Djokovic. I, didn't know that. I, I think I think Djokovic could have said the same thing to Federer because I, if I if I remember correctly, one, yeah, Federer, Federer had a chance for twenty one majors and he was serving for the match against Djokovic and lost. Okay, um, next male on my side, uh, Stefano Sistipas. I'm guessing him. you have him. I have number three. Yeah. Why do you have him? Well, I said he had a great, great clay court season. The guy can play on the surface. Um, you know, his instincts are good. When he has you on the run, he approaches the net, which most players do not do. He lost to Nadal at Barcelona Open in the finals and, and had match points against him and won Monte Carlo against, uh, I think, Rublev was who he beat. He's just been solid all season, you know? He's the next one, in my opinion, to win a Grand Slam out of the guys that we keep talking about. Who's going to win it? I think he would be the one. Sisti Pass has been coached incredibly well. You can credit his father. You can uh, credit Patrick Maratoglu. You can credit whoever you want, or you can credit it's just in his nature. We were watching uh, Stefanos play multiple matches. I just uh, I was thinking of one, but we watched multiple matches, especially the demolition of Ben Watt, the beautiful beard, fly collar, silver streaky Ben Watt Pierre, right? But Stefanos is very smart. If you watch him chip and charge, or you watch him hit a, a nice ball cross court, or his opponents moving forward, he, 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 he comes to the net at exactly the right angle. So he cuts off angles very well. Mm -hmm. So a lot of players, they'll hit the drop shot. Let's say I'm running to the backhand side, I'm a right-handed player, I, ch you know, I chip a drop shot across the court and the player moves in to come sprinting after the drop shot. A lot of players will just recover to neutral, Right? And then risk being passed. Yeah. Stefanos doesn't do that. He, he, closes. He, he, he closes onto the net, gives him the ability to hit the down the line shot, which is nearly impossible on the run right at the net because the net's right in front of you. So naturally, you need to go cross court, right? And he's there to cut it off and boop, he pops into the open court. Stefanos, I think, is one of the top favorites to win this tournament, up there with Nadal. I think Nadal is the first favorite. I think Stefanos is too. Yeah. Based upon what I've seen him do, using the clay for the backspin on the ball to make, to, to make it stay low. He's got a beautiful dropper going backhand to backhand with two right-handed players. Less grueling game uh, compared to uh, TMs. Now, unfortunately for, for, for Stefanos, if he does that against Nadal, Nadal's hitting a forehand over there. So, you know that Nadal has a, a, a habit of meeting the ball late on the forehand side. Even his, even his uncle Tony has said, do not do what 
my nephew does because only he can do that. I wouldn't teach anybody that, right? The dog can grab that ball and thump it up the line on you, so you're exposed. So Stefanos, I think, will have to change tactics against Nadal, but I think he can beat everyone else in this tournament doing that except Nadal. If Nadal and Sistipas are on opposite sides of the draw, I think Sistipas and Nadal could be a final. Okay. All right. We both had Sistipas. Next female for you. I have Warusa. I have her too. I'll scratch her off. Yeah, I have Garbay Warusa, number 12 seed. Why well, I picked her? Well, she's been injured. She played Charleston Open and had to retire against uh, Patty Malkutuseva. She was up 6 0 to 2. And she, she had to retire. She really hasn't played a match till now, Rome Open. And she won her first round against, um, uh, what was her name? Tiga? Uh, I forgot. Tiga. Tiga. She just won her match easily. She won the French Open 2016. She's a two-time Grand Slam champion. She loves the surface. Uh, raised on it from Venezuela. Raised in uh, in Spain. So she trains on this. And I think you know she has a great chance of winning this tournament. There's nothing I can add to that. I wrote Muguruza. Scratched her off my list. My thoughts are the same. She's won it before. Uh, she's at home here. Mm -hmm. She's a multiple-time major winner. If you had to choose 10 players, you can't leave her off your team. No. Uh, and we'll leave that at that. I, I can't. That was beautifully said. Excellent on that. And I do love how you brought out the potty mouth Putin Seba. Everybody knows our nickname for Putin Seba is potty mouth. Kind of like the garbage pail kids when we were kids. You remember? Oh, she should have been one. Yeah, she should have been, yeah. Oh, but man. She potty been. mouth Putin Seba. Look, there was a garbage pail kid when I was a kid. That was my name. It was Disgusting Justin. Disgusting. And he was like a biker on a, you know, we had big wheels, you know, with yeah. the big wheel on the front yeah. and two wheels in the back. And he was like driving down the street on a big wheel. I wish I would save those cars. Those yeah, cool. me too. I think they're worth money. Yeah. All right. Uh, next male. I'll start with him. Um, I couldn't. I'm not a huge fan of him and his game. Um, I just. I, I think he looks too much like a cat now. Oh. <laughs> but I, I. I went with Rublev. I went with Andre Rublev. He, he did beat Nadal recently on clay. Not that that matters, I honestly. I have Rublev as my number four. Yeah. But I chose Rublev simply because beating Nadal on clay has to give you some type of confidence. Definitely. Right? Yes. But, but, do I think Rublev is going to win the French Open? No. I, I, I may, he, he may, in my opinion, make a quarterfinal. Uh, that's what I put, yeah. But, but this, again, we, we chose 10 players and then a wild card or a qualifier, so 11. So, you know, I'm thinking Rublev has the chance to be in the top eight, but I don't think he has the chance to be in the top four. Well, Rublev has been consistent on clay. We know that he trains. He's trained at the Nodal camp, so he plays a lot on clay. He loves it. He speaks Spanish. He even shouts like them. He even grunts like them. He lost to Sissipas in a final. He's, he, I think he won a smaller tournament. He's just been very consistent on clay. He's patient. He loves hitting the big top spin. I just think he lacks power. He lost to Isner, which was disappointing. I thought, well, that's kind of odd, you know? But I think he will do well. I think he'll go far. Yeah. Do I think he's going to win it? No. Yeah, I'm not giving a complete, let's go, come on, Rick Flair, woo! I'm not giving him all that, but I'm giving him maybe top eight. Um, let's go to the next female. Uh, who you got? Schweitzer. I have her. We're, we're, we're doing I that. had it for Schweitzer. I wasn't going to, but I said, you know, she won the French Open last year. She hasn't had a great season. She lost to Barty. Barty kind of exposed her game, but maybe she was having a bad day. You know, people have a bad day. She couldn't figure it out on the court, but she's young. I think she's 19, 20 years old. One of the, one of the young girls that are not really into the social media or being on her phone. She says that she can put her phone down for a week. I think Wala told me that. You know, I think that she will do good at this tournament. Look, she's won it. She's, she's coming in with confidence. She just won it a few months ago. Yeah. I, I have Iga as well. I have Switek. Again, we've only lacked by one player so far. And this is pretty good. So, you know, maybe this is why we ended up married. I don't know why. I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, so far we've only lacked by one player, and that was Hallow. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I have Switek for exactly the same reasons. My main reason is that she's won it before. She's won it before. We, she just won it a few months ago. Uh, again, no disrespect to Anna Ivanovich. Love you, girl. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. <sighs> What was I saying? I forgot. I was thinking about Anna That's Manovich. what he was saying uh, also yesterday when we were watching Trading Places with uh, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> <sighs> Man, I have a weakness for Anna Manovich. I'm sorry. I, I, no, I, 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 I got nothing but love for Yes, you. I think it's the hair. I got nothing but love for you. Yes, it's okay. 
Uh, I'm Anna the same way for Iron Man. What? You so bitch? Okay, anyway, uh, I, I totally forgot what I was talking about. We were talking about... Oh, okay. The one and dones, the Ivanovichs, the Ostapenkos, and the list goes on, the Skiabonis, and blah, 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 blah. But I think Ivanovich did better than Ostapenko. She she did make a lot of sense. Okay. What I'm getting at is is, is that Swiatek is in, is, is, is in the mix, and she's won this before, and she's very young. Mm-hmm. Because of the nerves aspect going into a major, and, and I'm assuming, based upon what I've read, there's going to be fans at the French Open... I think she's going to be very much at home this year. So I think Swiatek does very well. I have her for the same reason. She's a great defensive player. She can hit through the court when she needs to. Um, so, yes, I have Swiatek on my my team for the same reason. Okay. All right? Next male that I have. Okay, you ready for this one? Casper Ruud. Yeah, I picked him. You picked him too? Yeah, I didn't want to. I scratched him off. See, I put Casper Ruud and then I scratched him off. Yeah. The only reason why, again, if you're watching the people that are consistent on clay, clay is different from hard courts and the grass court. You know, we know pretty much who's going to do well in hard court and grass court. But these guys, they just love the clay. And he can bother anybody with his loopy, high top spin, ugly game that he has. You know, he'll loop it, even the way he hits his forehand, even the racket he uses, I don't like. You know, it's, that, racket it's, it's that yellow racket, it's annoying to watch. I forgot the name brand. We talked about his racket. Is the same racket Barantini used? I think so. No, he probably uses that head racket. With the, it's like yellow. It's got a gray throat. It's I don't I don't enjoy watching this guy play at all. But he's just been very consistent. You know, he's beaten quite a few players. You know, there's, I think he beat Medvedev. Did he not beat Medvedev? I don't. Remember. That's a great question. There has been multiple times throughout the history of tennis where certain players' rackets or attire have been outlawed from matches because it it blends in with the ball. Have you heard of this before? Yes. The shirt. The shirt. Wearing a there shirt. was an Australian Open, I think, one year. Or it was a U.S. Open. I don't recall. So he lost to Berrettini in the semis. But yeah, you, you know. He beat Sissipas. He beat Sissipas. Yeah, so, good call. Yeah. Ka- Ka- look, Casper Ruud is very good on the surface. By the way, is, is not Casper Ruud another top 50 player in the world? Is, he does, uses a Yannick's racket. But actually. look, doesn't Casper Ruud, isn't Casper Ruud's father mm-hmm. a former top 50 in the world player? Something like that. Uh, so he comes from the game. I don't know if I'm right or wrong there. I I, I thought I remembered that. But Casper Ruud has been doing very well on the surface. I think he can very well finish in the top eight, hence why I chose him on a field of ten. Okay, mm-hmm. so we both chose him. He's a great player, uh, and, and, and he can do very well. Um, next female that you have on your squad, Carla? I have uh, Muchova, Carolina Muchova. I don't, Muchova. Ha- I don't have Muchova. <laughs> Why do you have Mujo? She's number 20th seed. She beat Osaka. Not that that's a big deal. And she beat Sakari in Madrid. Um, I put she's 24. Uh, she lost to Alexandrova in the Stuttgart quarterfinals. Uh, she knows how to play. She's an all-around player. She's a fighter. She's Czech. She checked. So she trains with Kvitova. Kvitova does well. I put on clay as well. Um, and I just think it's time for her to do something. And Muhova, I'm not. And correct, us, correct me if I'm wrong out there. Muhova, Muchova, um, I'm, I'm not. I think it's Muhova. Yeah, I think as well. She's a fighter. She she's kind of like potty mouth Putin Seva, but without the potty mouth. You know, she she gets down and dirty as she. She what, beat Barty at the Australian Open. I looked. I thought about her. I did. Um, the only reason why I did not select her is just her history at the French. I think the farthest she ever made it was the second round. Third round, I think I put here. Okay, well, fair enough. I thought it could even be the first round. Maybe. Um, either way, uh, she has um, been for quite a while now a very solid and feisty player. Like, come on. Um, but she was not on my radar for this tournament. I, I, I like her as a player, but not for this tournament. So she's made it as far as you're right, the second round. And the yeah. only reason I picked her because I've seen she's done well in clay. She's had quite a few good competitors that she's beat. And you got to give her credit, you know, and play that counts. Yeah. If you can hang with those players. So I, I will politely, instead of debating, like, what? I like her as a player a lot. She rocks the headband. Doesn't she wear like a bandana? Yes, 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 yes. Um, I think she's a fighter and I respect um, uh, 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 women's players that fight like that. I do. Less the potty mouth. Mm-hmm. I hope she does well. But I didn't pick her on my team. And I'll say that I'll, I'll politely disagree instead of like what? Yeah. Who I think it's a great pick. Yeah, All right. I don't have her. My next woman was Serena Williams. 
And, and I don't have her. Yes. So I, I don't think I, I don't think we need to spend too much time on that. Oh, okay. I mean, she's won 23 majors. She needs 24 to tie. She is a big hitter. She can hit through the clay. She's won it before. Three times. She's won it three times. Do, do you just want to leave it at that? Well, the only reason I put her, I said, how could you not put her out of 10 people? You know, she, she won in 2003, 2005, 2007. Yeah. She hasn't known well with the last few years, you know. Clay is going to be tough on her. Again, I saw her practice. I saw her practicing with her coach, and they were doing some drills, and I thought, geez, here she goes again. She looks, you know, you look at her Instagram and that stuff, and you think she's in shape. But then when you see her in those tights, and you see her moving around the court, I thought, man, she looked kind of slow. But um, you can't take her out. I mean, she could make a second week. She could surprise us. If she has a good draw, who knows? I agree totally. Um... I don't want to beat a dead horse with that. Uh, we all know that Serena is arguably the greatest of all time in women's, women's tennis. I know some people will chime in, you know, Margaret Court, knowing that that was a different era. Some people would say Steffi Groff, Martina Navratilova, and, you know, I may say Justine Hennon, but the major count is what counts. Um, and, and she deserves to get that, so she's on my team, because I hope she does get that. Mm -hmm. She deserves that. All right, my next male, Yannick Sinner. I have him too. He was my number five. I said young. I said uh, played lost in a dial in the quarters of the French Open. He's been consistent in this clay season. He could beat anyone. He's got the game for it. Never played junior tennis. Uh, went straight to the ITF at the age of 16 and has done well. Uh, not burned out. Hungry. Tall. Great backhand, which is what you need in, in clay. Understands the surface. Knows how to slide. Yes, he's he's. Yannick Center, now when Yannick Center, we started talking about, you and I here, along, uh, along with a lot of you, started talking about Yannick Center when he was just coming out of junior, not juniors, but challengers and so forth. Yannick Center was involved in the only year of the next, next gen bullcrap. Do you remember this? Mm -hmm. And I think he won that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, long story short, Yannick Center has made what, a, quarter, a quarterfinal or a semifinal at the French Open. Did he make us? Did Yannick Center? I quarters, but I can look. It might have been the quarters. I, I, sorry for that. Did Yannick Center make a quarterfinal or a semifinal last I'm year? A quarterfinal. And then met Nadal. But Yannick Center, as young as he is, made a statement that. Quarters. Okay, thank Sorry, I got that wrong. But he was in the top eight of the French Open last year, and Yannick Center said himself, quote unquote, I'm better than I was last year. Mm -hmm. So I think, with that said, as young as he is, I think he deserves to be. Uh, in the top eight, he was there last year in, in the flesh, so I think he should be projected to be in the top eight this year. All right. Who's your next female? Mertens. I have Mertens. I didn't think you would get her. Well, just because, again, we've been watching play, even though we don't do shows every day, and, you know, she... When I watch her play, I don't think of her as a power player. I think this surface suits her game. She can hit spots. She's defensive. She's not going to blow you off the court. She's also number one in doubles with uh, Sabalenka. She beat Halep, which he brought up, you know, beat Halep. So you got to give her credit for that. Uh, lost in the finals of in Instabu. She's just been very consistent. Lost to Sabalenka uh, at the last tournament, but she was injured. I just think in this type of surface, if you're patient, and you can hit 20, 30 balls, you got a great chance of making the finals. Yes. And she has that game. Yes, I, that's the exact reason why I picked her. Um, Mertens is, is, is really good at hitting her spots and staying patient. For the most part, I say for the most part, I have seen Mertens been out of shape a couple of times, but nothing crazy. Um, and she's not a heavy grunter. You know, there's some noise here and there, but she's not a heavy grunter. I, I, think, I think that at least Mertens has the ability to be in the top eight, do I think she makes a semi? Probably not. Uh, but top eight, I think it, I wouldn't be shocked if she made top eight. I wouldn't be shocked if she made a semi, but she deserves to be in the top eight for all the same reasons uh, that you just indicated. She's a control player. She's a disciplined player. She'll fight to the end, and she'll do it relatively quietly. Mm -hmm. All right? So we shared the same deal on that one. All right, my next male that I have, even though I am not a fan at all, um, no disrespect to him. He's a great player. I just, I'm not a big fan of just soccer type or European football type tennis where you're just always running around hoping to get to the ball back and hoping to give him another ball back. And oh my God, I just want to go to bed. <laughs> uh, that would be Diego Schwartzman. I did not pick him. Uh, why did you not pick him? Is it because you didn't like him the same way I, I don't and just couldn't? No. His season has been crap. 
Have you watched how many matches he's lost? He just lost to Felix Sache Elysium. He and has it was lost, badly. It was badly. He has lost almost. It's like something's out. Something. There's no fire in him. If you're watching this whole clay season, his whole clay season's been crap. He's lost to every type of player. He's not playing the same way he did last year. He looks tired. He just looks, I don't know, beatable. He's short. And on top of that, he just can't do much. Everybody's beating him. It's like he's become predictable. The, you cannot pick him. I'd rather pick someone like Zebra over Schwartzman on the surface. That was a good teaser. Carla, can I ask you a question? Did you pick Zvera on no. your team? I did not either. Um, I know Zverev just won, what, Madrid? I don't yeah. want to get into that now, but uh, again, um, Zverev to me is a puppy hater, and if you don't know what that means, Lin uh, Ivan Linda was coaching him, and he supposedly fired him because Linda would bring his puppy with him to practice. Uh, uh, so in other words, he's a puppy hater. Um, I didn't mean to deviate from Diego Schwartzman because yeah, Zverev's not worth it. Diego Schwartzman just lost 6-1, 6-3 to Felix, okay? And then on Madrid, he loses to Karatsev. Karras are very respectable. Yeah, and then on um, Barcelona, he loses to Corena Busta. On um, Monte Carlo, he loses to Rude. So he's just, he's had a tough year. Corda beat him in Miami Open. He's just had a tough year. At the French Even Open. Even though that's hard for At the French Open, dirt ballers prevail. But he's been do, playing, do you, he's been playing Rude. He can play on dirt. Do you, Corena Busta can play on dirt. And Karras have proved he can play on dirt. You, do you remember Gustavo Curtin? Yes. Quentin? Yeah. Quentin. Anyway. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite players of all time, by the way. Yeah. A really gritty player. Love Gustavo. Um, Schwartzman is not nearly the height or build of Gustavo, but he is willing to fight on the dirt at the French Open um, like Gustavo. You know, Curtin won it, what, twice? Didn't Curtin win two French Opens? I thought it was three. Three, maybe? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, how about Juan Carlos Ferrero? How many did Ferrero win? How many French Opens did Ferrero win? Was it one or two? Anyway, he, long story short is, is that the, 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 uh, Schwartzman's yeah, height three. Schwartzman's height has always been a problem. But Schwartzman can fight when he wants to fight. And, 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 and I think based upon the players I've already named, Rafael Nadal, Novak Djokovic, Dominic Thiem, Stefano Sistipa, Rublev, Casper Ruud, Yannick Center. I think Schwartzman on clay should at least be in the discussion for the top 10. In other words, he may not have to make the quarterfinals, but at least give me a solid performance in the round of 16. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Who's your next female? Uh, I put Kuda Mertola. Oh, I thought you were a shot. I thought you were in shock that I picked her. No, she's a fine player. Number two, a number 28 seed. I think she's Russian, uh, 24 years old. Again, she won Charleston Open, which was on the clay. You know, on the gray clay, lost to Mertens, Kvitova, uh, at Madrid, which are tough opponents on clay. She's just, you know, she just won her match at, at the Italian Open. She just beat Mertens, actually. Um, so I just think she's just fluid. You know, she time is passing her by. We used to talk about her before. You know, she made a French Open... Quarters, was it? Semis? Don't recall. I thought she made it pretty far a few years ago. Wasn't expecting Kudomotoba. I was not expecting that. I think if if Kudomotoba plays a tournament, my response to whether she wins or loses is a coin toss. Okay, so third round. Was the first. But I just picked her just because she's just been around the play season. You hear a lot about her, and I said, you got to pick the consistent players. Okay. If, if it look, this is an Australian Open coin. Your friend uh, Bob Davis sent to us from Australia. If Kudermato is playing, does she win or lose? She'll win the first or second. She round. loses. It's a it's a coin toss for her. So you know, fi a fine player, but I think we're digging now for to fulfill it's tough. It's to fulfill our list. <laughs> so I, well, I mean, okay, I look, can't go with Andrescu and okay, I can't go can, with Osaka. Look, so. can, I, can I can I just go ahead and tell you if we were playing fantasy together? <laughs> If we were playing the fantasy, it team, all depends on the draw. We can't see draws right now. We're guessing. If there's draws out, right, then you can kind of pick better. You can get an idea. Can this player beat that player? But we don't have draws, so we're just picking out of a bucket right now. Just, cool. Yeah. Cool. You good? Yeah. Because I don't think so. It would be a cold day in hell before I ever pick <laughs> Kuru Matova on my damn team. You pick Schwartzman, so I mean, there you go. Okay. <laughs> If you have to flip a coin to find out whether someone wins or loses, don't pick them. 
my woman and your place that you chose yeah. is Svitolina. <laughs> okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. She's laughing? I'm laughing. Sp- That's Sp- a good Svitolina's thing. made three quarterfinals, Carla. That's a great three thing. of them. The reason I'm laughing is because he always disses her. That's a great pick. I didn't think of her. You know what? I forgot about Svitolina. That's a great pick. Yes. Great. I'm okay. not fighting. I'm just laughing because no. he's never picked her. I think I think Svitolina has made the quarterfinal 2017, 2019, yes. and 2020. Great. Pick. And we're talking about who's got the stronger top 10? Now. You picked Talib, right? Yeah. Okay. And Svitolina, man. I'm balling over here. Oh, shit. Let's go, man. That? That I'm fun. killing it. All right. Let's just leave it alone because Svitolina, she's going to make the quarterfinal. I, I agree with him. I didn't think about her. The only reason why is because the last tournament, I think she was a bit injured and she didn't play too well. Yeah. And, and, and not only that, she's engaged. And I saw more feet. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. And you know what? She's got a. You know how f- American football, they got cheerleaders? Hey, hey, hey. Gal Monfils is her cheerleader. Yeah. So the roles reverse. I mean, she's about, the player and he's the cheerleader. It's about time she wins a slam, you know? She's not going to win it. Okay. Well, she's not going to win it. All right. Next male. Um, <laughs> you got to laugh. Who? I had to pick Roger Federer. No way. He won it one time. Why would you not pick Roger Federer over many others? Look, Are you telling me that Schwartzman has a better chance than Federer? Schwartz? Yes, yes, yes. That's a joke. That's what, what not a guy, joke. What other guy did you pick? Let's see, Casper Ruh. No, 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 I pick Casper Ruh, but Casper Ruh has a better chance than Federer. Okay, yeah. Are you kidding me? Okay. Federer won it one time and made a few, a few finals. He's not bad in clay, Justin. Out of, Nadal would be the first clay guy. Djokovic would be the second clay guy. Sissipas would be the next clay guy. TM or TM and then Sissipas. Federer you would have to throw in there. I'm getting dumb. Please by remember the your tattoo. Are you are you are you serious? Are you serious? I'm very serious. I'm not saying he's gonna win it, but my top ten Federer would be in there. Absolutely. Okay. Poll question. Does anybody agree or disagree with Carlos um, top ten potential? Obviously, yes. What would are you, you serious? When has Federer gone out the first week at the French Open? When? I, I Can don't you know. Look? Wait a minute. Did he not do his research? When has Federer gone out the first week of the French Open, Justin? I don't know. I didn't He's not being said for us. Anyway, that's the crazy pick. Okay. That's stupidity. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to debate that one because we've talked about it. You want to make a bet? You can't. Do you want to make a bet? Do you want to make a bet? What round? If Federer makes the second week of the French Open, you got to shave. No. I'll I'll do a show with my shirt off. No. I've seen you with the shirt off. I'm not shaving. No. Then you're obviously believe that Federer can make the second week because you're not that confident. Oh. Uh, ah, 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 thank you. <laughs> I don't think he'll make the second week, but... You look. won't even take the bet because you know. No, that's a big bet. That's a big bet. He just said, is that a joke? Didn't he just go... Do you, look. Come on. Look. How he, much you want to bet? He's here, a, here's a better bet. He's a great... I bet you that Federer makes it further than Casper Root. Okay, I'll take that bet. You got to shave. Short. I'll make it short. <laughs> oh, come on. Anyway, I disagree. Uh, well, do you, dis- do you agree or disagree? Do you think Federer rolls deep into this tournament? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Anyway, my next female, Sophia Tennant. I know that she has had an abysmal time since she won her major. Went through appendix surgery. Appendicitis, yes, appendicitis. I get it, but that's very that's very common. People yes, recover yes. from yes, that. Agree, right. Okay. She was a finalist here before. Yeah. By the way, can anybody tell she me? She wanted to kick her ass. Sorry. Why did you spoil it? I was... <laughs> okay. Everybody give Carla a thumbs up. That just lost out on a set of strings. I was fixing to give someone if they answered that question correctly. <laughs> Or the cash value thereof. So just everyone else out there say, Carla, you either owe me a set of strings or 20 bucks. Because she just spoiled it. We have it. joint accounts, so come out of your pocket. Okay. She's won it before. Not won it. She's made a final before. Yeah. She's won a major before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, She's had an abysmal season. The clay slows everything down a little bit, gives her a little bit more time to react. I think Sophia Kennan makes a quarterfinal. Unless the breakup with her dad as coach was too much to, to morph 
into mentally? Was it a was it, is that a microcosm of 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 her future? Hey, I have to separate from my dad, and now my career goes to shit. She has a new or future. or does it make her even better? I think it's a good thing for her. I don't see her. She's not in my top ten. I don't say that she can't make it. Why? Tell me why. I just think she's had a, a, a tough year. She's dealing with a lot. Her comp, she's lost to quite a few. Her play season hasn't been good. I think that um, I don't. I just don't see her doing well. I see other players a lot better than her. Their play doesn't suit her game. It just doesn't. She made a final. Yeah, but mm. okay. I am down to my ninth and tenth male in no particular order, and my last female. And then I have two just odd dark horses. And in comments, by the way, please put your lists of players. Uh, who you would have, whether you agree or disagree with us. If you could scratch one of ours and add someone else, or if you disagree totally and you're like, you suck, man. What the hell are you talking about, man? Let's go. Put your list there. There will be some giveaways based upon comments on the show. I want to see list, though. I want to see some fight on these lists, and, 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 and we're going to reward. All right. Uh, let me go to my ninth male um, out of 10. Oh, actually, 11. Carrot Sev. I only put Carrot Sev. I don't want to talk about too much about this. We don't have necessarily a lot to discuss terribly because he was in Challengers and Futures and so forth uh, a year and a half ago. But he is middle-aged as a tennis player. He's 27. He's got mammoth legs. And this is a very um, uh, tough surface. That's why I think him. Surface. The legs was one. Reason well, I he think. has the legs. I think that in clay, you can't be that big. The long points, three out of five sets on clay with Spaniards that love playing on the surface can slide. I don't think that his big body is going to suit this game. I just couldn't pick him for that. Sure, two out of three, yes, but three out of five, no. I had to pick him because of the legs. I had to pick him because of his age. Not too old, not too young, so very mature. I picked him because of his maturity and his ability to fight. And at, let, let's say Karatsev was an aspiring player starting from, say, Djokovic or Nadal or Federer's age, very young. Oh. Mm -hmm. No, right now he would be peaking, right? At, at, at what is he, 27, Karatsev? 27, yeah. Uh, so at, at like 27, that's when Federer is peaking. If, if Nadal, Federer, that's when they're peaking. This is peak time. And he just missed all the limelight before that. Because it's peak time and he has fight, I think he has a chance. Okay, so I put him on my top 10 I mean, list. he's not a bad pick. I just didn't pick him. Who's your knight? Berrettini. Fair enough. The only reason I picked him is we got to pick 10. And, uh, he does well in play. He's a talent. Fair enough. You know, he made the finals, lost to Zevra. You know, he, he's, he can beat some players, you know. Good on clay. Yeah. Not my favorite, though. Not because he's my favorite. I just had to pick yeah, him. Yeah, look, since, since Berrettini has um, uh, come on the ATP Tour... I've given him grief. We, for the most part, have both given him grief. I think you've been a little bit more sympathetic than I have. I think I've said things such as, Barantini made the ATP finals at the end of the year. Ha <laughs> ha, so did Jack Sock, right? Um, Barantini, had a Barantini has had a better career at yeah, this point, yeah. so I'll, I'll take the disrespect for that. I still don't respect necessarily 100% of Barantini's game. I, for some reason, I just don't. Maybe it's his of fluorescent yellow racket too. I I don't know. Yeah, Casper doesn't have that. I thought he did. I was thinking of somebody else. So thinking. so Berrettini does have the fluorescent yeah, yellow racket. Um, uh, look, if, if if I wrote a note here on the bottom of my of my uh, pick sheet, I wrote here. Notice I left off Zverev and Berrettini, and they both made the final of Madrid. Berrettini, yeah. Okay, I left off Zverev and Berrettini. Why? Zverev's a little sissy boy, in my opinion. Berentini, I uh, if Berentini wants to gain my respect as a player, he better make the top eight of the French Open. That's all I'm saying. Hmm. Okay, it's finally it, it's about time he, he he finishes top eight in a major if he's going to be in the top ten for this long. All, right. all I'm saying. Okay, my tenth player is There's no way we're the women. We're still at at eight at nine for the women. Okay, go ahead. Well, who do you have? I got Carolina Pliskova. Pliskova, yes, I said it. Look, Pliskova has made a semifinal at the French Open before. Mm. She tends to be able to hang in, hang in there, hang in there. You know, sometimes she doesn't close the door. Mm -hmm. I think the clay will slow it down a little bit, so she can take, so she can take a little bit more time to set up and hit her shots. 
I wouldn't be surprised if Pliskova wins this damn French Open. <laughs> Why are you laughing? That's the worst analysis I've ever heard. First of really? all, Pliskova's game is more suitable on hard court because she's a big bang girl. She doesn't like hitting the ball more than three times. She's a Sabalenka without emotions. But you picked Sabalenka on your team. But she's doing well on clay without emotions. Her shots are too flat. You don't do well on clay when you hit flat. Let's go, Pliskova. Woo! Are you serious? Yeah, I'm dead serious. I picked Sakari over her. Really? Back foot hitting off the She's back foot? Back... Sakari has a better chance than Pushkova. Are you kidding me? You guys missed the whole... Pushkova can at least hit more than five, six balls. This girl has no emotion and hits everything flat. Nah. Okay. Um, Pushkova is a great player. Sakari <laughs> has a bun on her I, head. I I'm not saying I like Sakari. I'm just saying Pushkova? If this were the U.S. Open, I'd agree with you. Or even grass. Okay. Okay. Play? Okay, let me, let's freeze that and we'll stop our debate now. Here. Poll question. Oh, Poll question. Okay. Poll question. Put in comments. I don't need this, Carla. I don't need this from you right now. Okay? Wow. Can I we, never, I never thought can we maintain that. a little level of respect here, Carla? Okay? Yeah. Because Blisco was a great player. Want to bet that Kuruma Toga does better than Pitchcock? Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> okay, listen, listen, listen. Poll question. <laughs> Who? Sorry, you're sweating. Who does better in this tournament? Carolina Pliskova or... Kudermaitova. You said Sakari. Oh, Sakari, yes. I'm the one. Damn. I'm the one. Take your pick. Okay. <laughs> I'll take the two-one I'll take the two, two one odds. She's got two players, Kudermaitova and Sakari, and I'm just taking Pliskova. Yeah, good luck. Who are you going to take? Who's team you going to roll along? Let's go. You better be on team me. Let's get down. They might be scared with the, you know... All right, my one woman's dark horse, not necessarily. Wait, 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 up to number 10. Okay, go ahead. We got, I'm done you with my You go ahead the dark horse. You still have, oh, you don't. Yeah, well, so then we got to go to the last guy, don't we? Yeah, yeah, last guy. Last guy and last woman? Yeah, go. Oh, you picked your last, your last woman? Go. Oh, I picked Kovitova as my number 10. That's how do you, a, that's how a good, do you uh, put Kovitova against Pushkova? Okay, that, that means, give or take. Would give you, or take. Would you rather have Kovitova Pushkova or Pushkova? Has the no, same difference. Pushkova has no slams. Zero. Zero! Kvitova lost at the French Open. Same difference. It's the same player. It's a it, lefty against a righty. Okay. Lefty who can hit a forehand with a lot of topspin. One that hits flat off her back foot. That can't move. Who's a giraffe? All right. A giraffe. They're both giraffes. She's a veteran. She They're made both veterans. 2012 and 2020. Kvitova made the semifinals of the French Open. Buddy, Pushkova made the semifinals of the French Open. Girl, one time. So two beats one. Man, you're and, smoking and, something, man. And Kvitova won many slams, about? buddy. Anyway. All right. My ten guy. Yep. I, 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 Who? I, I only chose him because Who? I didn't know who to choose. Who? <laughs> Christian got rid of the chair. I chose him too. <laughs> oh, okay, man. hold on, hold on, hold on. Time out. <laughs> Christian Garin, by the way, is both of our 10th pick. Uh, Christian Garin is no slouch. By the way, Christian Garin trained at Nadal's academy for a while. He left the academy because he thought that their uh, strategic scheme plan was too defensive. He wanted to be more offensive. Mm -hmm. So he left the academy. Uh, Christian Grin has the same ability, I think, in the mindset of Casper Rude. That's why I chose Rude. Um, I think players you have to look at on the outside looking in, Grin and Rude, um, they're specialists here. They've been around it. They, they've practiced on it. They've been raised in it. They've been knocked down on it. They've been propped up on it. Uh, that's why I had to pick him on my team. Uh, Grin has a very good chance. I think equally as good of a chance as Casper Rude. I put him on the same kind of playing field. But look at Juan Carlos Ferreira. Look at Gustavo Curtin. Who would have thought? And he just But yet they won multiple majors. And these are the type of players that I think they are. Yeah, yeah. He's beaten some good players and uh, lost. Some dark players. dark horses, and I'll name them quick. Uh, women's and men's. And, and these these are you know me. these are super young people or people that have been around that have a chance because of the surface, whatever. I, I, I put Carlos Alcaraz here, the very young Spaniard. Um, and, and look, I, I, I get Nadal bloom off the court recently, 
Uh, but he also bageled Adrian Manorino, the veteran French player. Now, that's a big deal. But to bagel a veteran is a, is a tough thing. And I don't think Manorino gave him the bagel. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he can win a couple of rounds. On the women's side, Petra Martic. Petra Martic, Petra Martic is coached by Francesca Schiavoni, as well as uh, one other gentleman. I forget his name. But Martic, I think, has made, what, a semifinal or a final here before? Um, correct me if I'm wrong there. I didn't do the math on that. But, but Petra Martic is another, another one on the outside looking in. I think between my 22 players, 11 men and 11 women, I think I'm pretty confident that I've nailed at least the finalists on both sides and the, and the winners on both sides. She made a quarterfinal. Okay. What, do you agree or do you agree or disagree that out of my eleven men and eleven women, I've selected all the finalists within and the winners within? You were pretty much at the same, except for a few like Pliskova. Um, I picked um my vet. I picked a veteran as as a dark horse. He's just been doing well. He's been out of tennis for a little while, but he's been beating a lot of players. The players go. that are specialists on play, Nishikori. He's been going through them, and, and I don't think if you're not watching tennis or keeping up with it or doing your research, if you looked at what Nishikori has done lately, he likes this type of game. He's patient. He can hit 20, 30 balls. This is what he likes doing. I think it's a great surface for him to make the second week, so I picked Nishikori. Fair enough. For girls, I picked Paula Badosa, who's from Spain, uh, young girl. She's been doing really great on clay, beating players like uh, Benchik, beating players like Kuda Mertova. Um, you know, she born in New York, but raised in Spain. Played on dirt since she left New York at the age of seven. Good for her. Good pick. So I think she's just playing solid, and those are my dark horses. All right, there you have it. Do not forget to subscribe. If uh, to subscribe, hit the subscribe button. Click the like button. When the French Open begins, we'll be giving away prizes, cash, uh, strings, and so forth. Um, if you want us to do the fantasy team competition again, which puts out $250 in cash, a tennis racket of your choice, whatever, put it in comments. I need at least 20 comments uh, that gives me a thumbs up on fantasy or something because if I don't get at least 20 applicants, uh, we're not doing it. It, it, it. it takes a lot of work. So when you're doing the Excel sheets, getting the prizes and contacting people, hey, we're doing it, give me stuff to send out, and then it's just two people. It, uh, it, sorry, it doesn't work that way. Uh, see you soon. Congrats Thanks. to Novak Djokovic. 320 weeks. She, he just passed Serena Williams. Um, I was looking at that list. Number one is Steffi Graf at 377 and Martina Navratilova is at number two at 332. Mm -hmm. Most weeks at number one. Most weeks at number so one. So Novak finally passed Serena. Mm -hmm. Heck of an accomplishment. Which that's a tough thing to do because Serena dominated for a long time. And she still can dominate. I just don't think this surface will allow her to do it. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, thanks so much, everyone. We'll see you soon. Let us know if we should do Fantasy Team. Hit the subscribe button. We'll see you soon.